Hi everyone! Welcome back to a new video. Today we have this laptop. This right here is a Lenovo ThinkPad T520. This laptop was released back in February of 2011 and my model has an Intel Core i5-2540M which clocks in at 2.6GHz, 8GB of DDR3 RAM, a 120GB Samsung 840 SSD and a NVIDIA NVS 4200M which powers the 15.6 inch 1600 by 900 LCD display. Let's find out what this laptop can still do in the current year. Since this laptop is my own laptop that I've been using for the past couple of months, I already know that it works and I also can't unbox it. I bought this laptop at a thrift shop back in October of 2020 for 40 euros. When I brought it back home it would not boot due to the fact that it was missing RAM and a hard drive. For the time I put in a single 4GB stick of RAM and an SSD that I had laying around. But for this video I upgraded the RAM to 8GB and I put in a Samsung 840 120GB SSD. Since this laptop did not have the hard drive caddy anymore. I just used some tape to stick the SSD into place. After replacing the RAM and SSD, it was time to clean the laptop. On the right speaker the laptop does have a weird stain that I could not get off, but the rest of the laptop cleaned up pretty well. Then it was time to boot the laptop up. In the BIOS the laptop showed that it had the Core i5-2540M and the 8GB of RAM. After that, the laptop booted straight to the pre-installed install of Windows 10. Since I used this SSD before, the GPU drivers were also pre-installed. Windows did have to install updates which made this boot take a lot longer than usual. Now that I know that the laptop still boots, it was time to have a look at the laptop itself. The hinge on this laptop is very good and the locking mechanism also feels very nice. This laptop can easily be opened with one hand. Now let's have a look at the ports. On the left side of the laptop there is an opening for the fan, a DisplayPort port, a VGA port, two USB ports, a eSATA port, a 4 pin FireWire port and a slider for the Wi-Fi. On the back the laptop has a USB port, the charging port and a fan opening. On the right side the laptop has a media card slot, an express card slot, a combo audio jack, the DVD player, the ethernet port and an opening for a lock. This laptop has a track point which is a little knob that you can use to control the mouse. In my opinion using the track point feels better than using the trackpad. The laptop also has dedicated volume controls which is a very good feature. Another thing that this laptop has is a light. Yes you heard that right. Near the webcam the laptop has an LED which lights up the keyboard when you press the shortcut for the light. This feature is very handy since it actually works very well in dark places and it even allows you to read for example a book using the light. In daytime it doesn't really make a difference however. Another cool feature that this laptop has is the fingerprint reader. This fingerprint reader is pretty accurate and it's much faster than typing in my password. If you don't like using the track point that I mentioned earlier, this laptop does have a trackpad which also feels very nice. The keyboard layout on this laptop is a little weird and it does require a little bit of getting used to. The escape key is huge. The function and control buttons are switched around and to the top right of the keyboard you have a lot of extra keys. When the laptop is closed you can still see these little status LEDs which is a nice bonus. Time to move on to the keyboard on this laptop. The keyboard on this laptop is the best keyboard that I've ever felt on a laptop. It almost feels as good as my keyboard with blue switches. Here is how this keyboard sounds. Mm -hmm. 
So now, how is this laptop for use? Well, let's start with YouTube. Up to 1440p, YouTube is perfectly watchable, although while testing, I found the speakers to sound pretty bad. This right here is an NVIDIA GeForce 7300 LE. This card was released in March of 2006 for about $35. Now let's move on to some benchmarks. First off, I ran user benchmark. User benchmark showed that the processor was performing way above expectations, the GPU was performing as expected, and that the RAM was performing way above expectations. For the next benchmark, I used Heaven. On the high quality preset, I got an average FPS of 6.3 and a score of 158. Now, let's move on to some games. First off, Minecraft. On medium settings in the 1600 by 900 resolution with a render distance of 15 chunks, Minecraft got an average FPS of 33 with 1% lows of 6 FPS and 0.1% lows of 2 FPS. Minecraft is definitely playable on this laptop. Time to move on to Roblox. On the lowest settings in the 1600 by 900 resolution, Roblox was absolutely playable and I got an average FPS of 38 with 1% lows of 25 FPS and 0.1% lows of 2 FPS. So for lighter games this laptop is suitable. Another light game that I tested was Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator. In the 1600 by 900 resolution, this game was also absolutely playable. Now time to move on to a bit more demanding game. Euro Truck Simulator 2. On the lowest settings in the 1600 by 900 resolution, this game ran acceptable. I got an average FPS of 29, with 1% lows of 23 FPS and 0.1% lows of 2 FPS. After that, I tested Bus Simulator 12. On the lowest settings in the 1600 by 900 resolution, this game wasn't very playable. I got an average FPS of 16 with 1% lows of 9 FPS and 0.1% lows of 3 FPS. Alright, time for CSGO. On the lowest settings in the 1600 by 900 resolution, the game ran fine and in the benchmark I got a max FPS of 40 and an average FPS of about 20. Now it's time for BMNG Drive. Using the lowest settings in the 1600 by 900 resolution, I got an average FPS of 25 with 1% lows of 12 FPS and 0.1% lows of 9 FPS. BeamNG is playable, but it's definitely maxing out the GPU. I then tested Bus Simulator 16. On the lowest settings in the 1600 by 900 resolution, this game was definitely not playable. I got an average FPS of 13, with 1% lows of 4 FPS, and 0.1% lows of 1 FPS. This game also slows down the time when you have below 30 FPS and that did not help the experience whatsoever. Now time to test PC Building Simulator. On the lowest settings in the 1024 by 768 resolution, this game ran very poorly. I got an average FPS of 11, and 1% lows of 2 FPS and 0.1% lows of 1 FPS. The game also had a bit of input lag which definitely did not improve the experience. Alright, let's move on to Fortnite. On the lowest settings with a 3D resolution of 30%, Fortnite got an average FPS of 26 with 1% lows of 14 FPS and 0.1% lows of 8 FPS. Fortnite is playable, but the quality is so bad that I would not call it playable.
And after that, it was time to test the battery. The battery in this laptop definitely degraded as this is the original battery. After about 37 minutes the battery was empty, which is not good. It looks like I'll have to replace the battery in this laptop. And with that, it's time to shut this laptop down and tidy up my desk. Now, what is my opinion on this laptop? Well, actually, this laptop is very much usable in 2021. It might not handle games, but I did edit the 2020 recap video on this laptop, and that went really well, and I was very impressed by what it can still do. If you are looking for a good laptop for around $100, I would definitely recommend this laptop. There are also variants out there with a Core i7 processor and a 1080p screen, and I think that those are still more than usable. Overall, I had a very good experience with this laptop, and this laptop will continue to be my main laptop for a while. And with that, this video comes to an end. Thanks so much for watching, comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!